Hey guys, Adam's Furniture Restoration back with you today on this brisk, chilly March afternoon. Actually, some flurries were coming down a little while ago, and if you don't already know it, refinishing furniture outdoors when it's snowing or raining is just a very, very bad idea. I would highly advise against it. When raw wood gets wet, it actually will start to swell up. Now, there are some instances where that's what you're looking to do, uh, especially if you're making a cutting board, something like that. It's kind of good to get it wet to let it expand before you, you know, um, plane it, sand it down, whatever you want to do. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, for what we're doing, we do not want it to get wet. It has stopped snowing, so we're going to keep going. As you guys know, this series is designed more for beginners. Uh, people who are not too familiar with the process. However, if you've done it for a long time, you might pick up on a couple tips or you might even see something that you want to let me know that I might be able to take advantage of as well. I apologize in advance if it sounds a little weird the way I'm talking. It's very cold. My face is starting to freeze. I'm having a hard time moving my lips. But anyway, as you guys already know, we have stripped this, prepped it, sanded it. It is ready for stain. So, a few things that we're gonna need. As always, start with your safety glasses. $2 a piece, you probably get them for, uh, for even less. Get them, protect your eyes. Number one, always have safety glasses. Uh, I would, if you're doing it outside, I'm not gonna wear my respirator just because you're gonna have a hard time hearing me speaking, obviously. And we're outdoors, it's very windy today. I'm not worried about breathing any of this stuff in. Uh, let's see, another thing you will need is, I like to wear gloves, I don't like this stuff on my hands, I don't like it getting underneath my fingernails, it is a chemical, protect yourself. You're going to need some stain as well, I'm going to use some Minwax stain here, I'll show you what we got going on. Uh, for most applications, you're probably going to want a container of some sorts for mixing. The other thing is, depending on what you're doing, you may need a color sample. This is a door off of a, I believe it's off the customer's bar, if I'm not mistaken. But we're looking to match these as close to this as possible. So, what you want to do, which I already did ahead of time, you want to dust off as much of that sawdust as possible, get it out of the grooves, all that good stuff. You want it as clean as you can. Just get a, um, you can use anything. You can use a, a, a brush, use your hand, use a rag. If you have a compressor, just you blow it out of there if you want to. So, what I'm going to use here is actually two different types of stain. Now, this is a small piece, of the, so this is why I'm going to get away with this little, little cheater method here. Normally, you'd want to mix your stain into some sort of container to get what you're looking for, especially if you're looking to um, do other projects down the road. It's a color that you like, that you know you're going to use again. You want to make extra and save it. That's fine. But for this, it's a very, very uh, small piece. I'm not too worried about it. Oh shoot, one thing I forgot to mention is you're also going to need some rags. How could I forget that? Okay, so these are old socks. That's what I'm using. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need a silk tablecloth. You don't need anything special. An old t-shirt, um, socks, whatever you want to use. Just use cotton. Don't use, uh, uh, what's that, uh, polyester or anything funky like that. It's just going to push the stain around. It's not going to absorb it. You could probably use paper towels. I never have, uh, but for something small like this, you probably could. I mean, that's something you might want to, you know, try, I guess, if you don't have any uh, rags on hand. So, I'm going to use Midwax Golden Oak, and this is a color that I mixed up a long time ago for a different table that I did. So, when I mix the two together, they get pretty close to the color that I'm trying to achieve here. But, like I said, I'm going to do a bit of a cheater method here. Show you what I'm gonna do because I don't feel like mixing it up because for a top this small it's, it's a little unnecessary. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna lay down some golden oak, and then I'm gonna take some of this and put it right on top of it to kind of go back and forth a little bit to work the two together to kind of mix it up that way and then wipe it off. Um, like I said, you can mix it in a container, but for me, for this small piece, it's, it's an extra step that's just not necessary. So, one thing to keep in mind when you're staining is you want to do bigger sections. The same as before when we were stripping. You don't want to do small little quarters because then you're going to see these boxes. It's just going to look like garbage. You want to do bigger sections. Now, I'm going to do the whole table in one shot. If it is a, we'll say a conference table, for example, then you're going to kind of have to break it up in sections, but I would do longer pieces, you know, just not boxes, but that's, that's a, um, a story for another day. 
So, what I am going to do first is get that gold oak. Now, you don't want to leave a big splotch on one spot and leave it and go back and forth. What will happen is it will actually absorb that stain. You're going to see a little bit of a mark where it will suck it in right there, not anywhere else. So, I should practice what I preach and put all my uh, safety glasses there first. Okay. So, I've got rag number one. What I'm going to do is some of that golden oak on there. Stains today are not the same as they were um, way back when because of different, uh, I guess you could say environmental requirements. I'm not exactly sure what the proper term is. So you can stir them up a little bit. You are going to get some of the uh, some of the pigment right there on the bottom, so you want to stir it up. That I already did with these. Okay, so you're going to saturate your rag really good, right? Just get it on there. Back and forth, back and forth. Now you don't have to go crazy with the I mean, always going with the grain is a good practice, but it's not always necessary. You know what? I might not have to mix this. I already did the other table. That's already been stained. So check this out. I don't know if you can see it. That's, that's pretty close. That is not too bad. This has a look a little more yellow on the edges. But as it's drying, that's pretty close. I'm probably not going to mix these. Things. So when I did the other table, that's what I did. I put down the golden oak and the other one on top. However, most of that absorbed into this rag already, so it may have already mixed it up for me. I don't think I'm going to have to mix this with this one. I love that. Saving a step is awesome. goes a really long way. If it's brand new wood, sometimes it's a little uh, it's a little more thirsty and it's going to suck up a lot more stain, but usually pieces when you're refinishing, a lot of times they don't suck up as much stain as a, a brand new piece. There we go. So we got it on there. Looking pretty good. Matched our color sample very well. Now what you want to do is take your dry rag and just go back and forth and wipe it off off a little bit, flip it, go like that, go back and get your edges, that's all you got to do. Staining is very, very easy, it's not difficult. Now, one thing is you don't want to put stain on there and then leave and go have a sandwich or, or a drink, whatever you're up to. When you start, you want to get it on there, let it sit for a little bit, and then get it off. The longer you let it sit, the darker it's going to get. However, I mean, there's a point where it's only going to absorb so much, it's it's not going to get much darker. Some people like to stain it, let it sit, and stain it again. Yeah, I guess you could do that if you want to get it a touch darker. I don't know how much you're really going to get, but it's very important to wipe off as much of the stain as possible. You don't want to leave it on there very thick. What's going to happen is when you put your finish on there, it's just not going to adhere properly. You're going to have adhesion issues, you're going to have uh, longevity issues of, of how durable the finishes. Um, it's, it's someone who does that, who really stacks it up and doesn't wipe it off a lot, that's someone who just doesn't know what they're doing. And as I've mentioned before, there's a lot of different ways to achieve your end result. This is the way that I do it. If you're one of those people that stacks up the stain and you've had good results, well, you know, that's good for you. Keep doing it. I just would not recommend it. I just don't think it's a good idea. Cool deal. And that is it. That's all you have to do. It's very easy. After this, you want to let it sit, you want to let it dry. Um, they call it flashing as it dries, so you want to let this flash for a bit. Min wax is weird. It doesn't really dry that fast with, with what I've experienced over some of the other stains. So I would just let this bad boy sit for, I don't know, if you can let it sit overnight, I'd let it roll overnight. But if you're in a big hurry or something like that, oh man, I don't know, I'd let it go for at least four hours with the, uh, with the min wax. But anyway, as before, you guys know, if you have any questions, comments, etc. Please leave them in the comment section and as always do not forget to subscribe. Guys, after this dries I'm going to come back and we are going to spray it with some sealer. Sounds good, right? Okay, thank you very much and have a great day.